Good afternoon, traders and investors. Will back here with another one coming to you with a Wednesday market recap. Hope everybody is doing well. And in today's markets, guys, oof, it's about to get a little bit choppy after a third hotter than expected inflation report came out this morning. Yes, guys, for the third month in a row, inflation coming in hotter than the expectation. And for a second month in a row, inflation actually starting a little bit of an uptrend. So is it a disaster? Is it fine? That's what we're going to take a look at in today's video. Of course, we're going to go over the inflation report that came out fresh this morning. And we're also going to go over our major technical analysis on our indexes and big tech names and see how did the markets respond to the report? And are the bulls still in control or, or are they in jeopardy of losing very important levels? So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into today's video. It is definitely going to be an interesting one. So on the day, SPY down 1% off the back of that hot report. Here is your headline. CPI inflation rate stays hot, sinking the Fed rate cut hopes and the S&P 500 unfortunately falls. So as you can see, it did unfortunately fall. S&P 500 down five, uh, 1%. QQQ down 0.87%, and the heat map did not look very good, guys. It was pretty much a bloodbath. I apologize that this screen is blurry. I'm not too sure why Finviz is blurry right now. Hopefully, you can see these names okay. But as a whole, guys, you really shouldn't need glasses to, to tell what direction the market was going on the day today, right? Everything really getting beaten down hard to the downside. Now, big tech, the only shining star was NVIDIA. Meta was up nicely as well. For the rest, though, guys, financials taking an absolute bath. Healthcare as well, for the most part, down. The bottom half of the market, including real estate and some of your utilities names, obviously didn't like the inflation report today. Why? Because it sent yields skyrocketing higher for longer is indeed the narrative right now. So as a whole, guys, not a very good day on the markets. And on the one-day relative performance, you can see this expressed even better energy was actually the one that dropped the least. The one that dropped the most here, guys, well, the ones that are most exposed to higher interest rates, namely utilities and real estate, but nothing overall having a good time at all, guys. Really a negative day in the markets, and that was pretty much from the open. You can see here, here is your CPI candle in your pre-market trading. And for the rest of the day, the bulls tried to kind of hold up above uh, our big area of support that's down here, but it is not looking the best here, guys, right? Very hard momentum to the downside. So the next few days are going to be absolutely pivotal in determining whether or not the bulls can maintain this control that they've held all throughout the month of March. But if you ask me, it's starting to look a lot, a lot, a lot like last fall where we had the same type of narrative at play. And I'll explain as we get into this inflation report right now. So let's do that exactly right now. Uh, the inflation report for the day. So here was your expectation. We went over these yesterday, right? So your consensus for year over year was 3.4%. It came in hotter, 3.5% in terms of your um, month over month was expected to be 0.3%. It came in hotter as well at 0.4. And even your core CPI inflation coming in hotter than expected, the consensus was 3.7. And we got 3.8. All of the numbers, unfortunately, pointing higher right now. So let's take a look at where we stand on this chart right here. So here you can see your headline inflation um, line right down here in blue, steadily coming down. And the one thing that I do want to bring up, guys, it, it, it eerily, eerily reminds me of last fall. At that point in time, guys, we had been going up. Here is the price action prior to last fall. This is when the Fed was increasing interest rates and your headline inflation was for the most part. Let me just find the chart again. My bad, guys. Headline inflation was really plummeting. You can see that really January through pretty much the month of June, right? About five, six months of trading. Inflation was coming heavily down before people started people started talking about seasonality effects, right? Last summer, obviously during the months of summer, people want to go out and spend their money. And people were saying that seasonally, we may get a little bit of an uptick in inflation. And that's exactly what happened. July, August, and September did come in hotter and created a temporary little uptrend. And what happened to the markets, guys? We had three months of sell-off during which the Federal Reserve was saying, Higher for longer, higher for longer. Do not feel at, that they do not feel any urgency to start decreasing interest rates, right? That was then. This is now 
five months of upside, exactly similar to that. And now look what is happening again, guys. Inflation, once again, starting its little uptrend. So you guys know what the narrative is going to be right now. Inflation is going to be uptrending right here. It's going to lead to fewer rate cuts, which we're going to see later on in the data that I've prepared for you guys. Fewer rate cuts now, especially after a day like today. That is definitely going to be the narrative, guys. So these two things from the bear thesis coming alive over the course of the day. So could we potentially see some extended sell-off as this narrative continues? That is what we're going to look into, guys. So in terms of your CPI numbers, was it as bad as expected? Now, take a look at this headline right here. CPI items rose 0.4% in March, shelter and gasoline up. If you saw yesterday's video, it was hilarious because literally the last report from February was the exact same headline. Shelter and gasoline were your main culprits. And if we take a look here, guys, at your CPI data um, from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, you will see that overall headline inflation is relatively flat, right? Pretty much since last fall at this same period of time. Now, where is the inflation coming from? That's what we need to understand to determine. Is it a long-term problem or is it just potentially some temporary seasonal effects such as the ones that we saw last fall? Well, take a look here, guys. So your all items is down. Now we have the 3.5% read year over year for the month of March. Take a look at your goods inflation. Is it coming from goods? Is it coming from people going out in stores and buying more items? No, and I'm pretty sure that if you just ask anybody around you right now, and this is one of the main points that I do believe uh, that inflation is not going to come back permanently, just go around and ask your friends and family circle if they find that prices are expensive on everything right now from food to clothing and et cetera, and ask them if they're spending less money. Most, if not all of my friends and family are spending less money because prices are still high. Take a look at your goods inflation data. Goods inflation, this green line right here, you can see goods are significantly in a deflationary environment right now. I apologize for the month of March. Take a look at this 0.7% negative on a year over year read. So it's not coming from people going out and spending as much money as they did in 2021. So where is it coming from at this point, right? Well, it's only coming from two sources, guys. Shelter, this purple line up here, which is still elevated, it's a major contributor, guys, uh, to our headline inflation number right now. And the other one right now is going to be your energy, right? Energy, although was in a bit of a deflationary cycle right here over the past five, six months, has now returned positive and has returned positive, you know, kind of very, very quickly, right? From January to now March, that's a 6% swing. It doesn't look like much on the chart, but they've went from negative ter territory to positive territory and take a look at oil guys this is why it reminds me eerily of last fall take a look here guys after your significant rally in the markets which ended in july pretty much what did oil do when inflation was on uptick seasonally wise right three months of upside now with inflation having come up in the last couple of months one of the major contributors was energy what has oil been doing the exact same thing. So oil is still one of your major, major contributors, guys. But that does not that does not last forever, right? These things are just temporary items, in my opinion. They should not last the test of time. So that's point number one. Point number two. Let's take a look at this beautiful article that. Um, Yahoo uh, Finance put together for us, right? I always bring up this chart every single month when we get inflation because it's important to visualize where inflation is coming from. So you can see here, guys, here's our overall read for the month of March, 3.5%. There's only a few items that remain above it, and most of them are services, and most of them we covered on this previous graph. Take a look here. Auto insurance, clear, clear, clear outlier, guys. This is a seasonal thing. Auto insurance companies, Medicare insurance companies, they all raise their prices at the beginning of the year. So this, in my opinion, is some seasonality, right? This is just stemming from the fact that over the course of the pandemic, 2021, 2022, and even into 2023, new car prices were going like this. Used car prices were going like this. So naturally, insurance prices for cars that are getting more and more expensive on the used or new markets, Auto insurance is going up and obviously they've just renewed everybody's premiums at the beginning of the year. I personally had a fat insurance premium increase as well. That's one of your major contributors. Look at the second two, rent and housing, which we literally just discussed, right? That should be downtrending to the later part of the year, but so far still a sticky element as most people's new lease agreements were due pretty much in January and February to really get those increases in 
um, before the pretty much the rest of the year advances. So those are still sticky, but should be coming down as well. The rest, restaurant meals, personal care earnings, these are personal uh, consumer earnings, so your salary, right? Those, the salaries increases are above the rate of inflation. So it is good. Transportation still hot, but now look at everything below, guys. Look at literally everything below. This is crucial, absolutely crucial, right? Household energy, education, alcohol, medical care, recreation, pet and pet products, gasoline, groceries. I can go on, right? Clothing, new vehicles, electronics, hotel rooms, used vehicles, furniture, appliances, airfare, toys, rental cars, all of these items, guys, significantly below. So despite the fact that we've had this little bit of an uptrend on inflation, is it coming from everywhere? Absolutely not. It is still just a few little sticky elements that are also a little bit from seasonality, something that we saw in last fall's narrative across the markets when we had hotter than expected spending through the summer months. Well, now we have a bit of services inflation that is sticky right now and may just drag these markets a little bit down further. But once again, it is due to seasonal factors, not permanent factors in the economy. And this overall segment right here shows that best. Now, let's take a look at what they said in the article. All is not gloom. There is actually some good news for shoppers in the latest inflation numbers, along with a reasonable chance that the resurgence of inflation won't last. The buried gem in the otherwise troubling March inflation numbers is that goods inflation has essentially disappeared. Exactly what we talked about. The inflation rate for commodities in March was just 0.6% year over year, and the goods inflation rate has been under 1% for six months in a row. Take a look at this chart right here, and that says it all. Where's your goods inflation? Absolutely inexistent, guys, since last summer. It's been almost a year at this point, right? Overall inflation, still relatively sticky in the mid 3% range. Here is the main cause of your inflation right now. It is services, but those as well should be coming down. Most of the prices increases in services have already been done in the months of January, February, and March, usually when your service providers increase their rates at the beginning of the year. Now, let's take a look further in the article and really put this inflation myth uh, to the grave pretty much at this point, right? Above average, above average inflation is now being driven entirely by the service sector, where inflation is still uncomfortably high at 5.3%, right? Now, even there, anomalies are much of the story. One outlier is auto insurance, what we talked about, up 22% year over year. That reflects the higher cost of cars during the pandemic, et cetera, which we just talked about. Now, the other big driver of services inflation is rent, up 5.7% year over year. But the government's rent numbers are dated and don't fully reflect the cost of new leases, which have dropped since 2022, according to real-time data such as the Apartment List Rent Index. Economists expect official data to eventually reflect the lower cost of new leases, which will show up as lower rent and housing inflation in the future. Aside from rent and car insurance, prices in most other categories are getting back to normal, which is what we saw in this chart right here, right? And then they go on to say, look at this, in 21 out of the 28 categories that they track, inflation is lower than wage growth and also less than 3%. That suggests inflation will continue to moderate even if the headline number is a bit too high for the Fed to relax. And obviously, guys, once we had uh, the CPI print out over the course of the day today, right, it really didn't do um, it really didn't do any benefits to yields either. Right. Take a look at yields. Yields having one of their biggest days in recent memory. Right. Your 20 year yield is now all the way back up to four point seven five percent. Your 10 year yield as well is now back to about four point five five percent. Those are big, big, big days. It just goes to show, guys, that yes, it is a bumpy road. The job is not done. However, we are coming down and arguably in the most important thing, guys, your goods, they are still netly down. So that is what I'm going to continue on with the narrative, guys. I do think that inflation is going away permanently. But as the Fed has said, it's going to be a bumpy road. Now, where does that leave us with the markets, right? So we're going to do some analysis on our indexes right now. And just remember the bear thesis, right? So the bear thesis for a little bit of sell-off is a couple of things. Number one, inflation will uptrend. Well, now we have three months of inflation, you know, uptrending, quote unquote, and Jerome Powell is not going to be able to deny the evidence now. He will have to address that in the next meeting coming up in early May. Number two, fewer rate cuts. Well, take a look, guys. Fewer rate cuts, definitely on the table now. Take a look at your Fed rate odd, uh, odd cuts, right? 
Fed rate cut odds after a day like today. After the CPI inflation data, markets were pricing in just 19% of a Fed rate cut by June 12, down from 54% ahead of the report. So June, take it off the table, not coming. For all of 2024, markets see 23% odds of at least three quarter point rate cuts from the current five and a quarter range. So now the market's not even seeing three rate cuts. Where are they sitting now? One odds of a one quarter point or fewer jump to 42% from 15%. The markets now are essentially are pricing in between one and two rate cuts by the end of the year. But with this inflation report, guys, it leads us to believe that most likely those inflation are those rate cuts will only come not in June, not in July, maybe only in the fall, guys. Think September, October, November, likely for your first cut because they're just not satisfied with the trend of inflation. It's just not down hard enough for them to cut sooner than expected, right? That is one thing that the Federal Reserve is going to keep a close eye on. The other things are still doing good, however. So they're in a tight spot. Jobs are still healthy. The economy is still healthy as well. And in my opinion, guys, that's why the market still hasn't fallen off you know, into a severe weekly and monthly consolidation at this point, just because the underlying economy and the jobs market are still very, very good. And there's really no fears currently of a recession on the table. So are we going to have potentially a little bit of sell off as we get through this seasonal inflation? Very, very possibly, guys. But is it going to be a recessionary environment or going back to a bear market? I personally do not think so. So hopefully going over that CPI data has helped you guys guide through uh, you know a lot of the mixed signals that have been circulating today let's take a look as well at the fear and greed index one of our other uh, greed leads to technical sell-offs right let's take a look at how that is sitting as well you can see here on the overview we were pretty much for the whole year we were sitting in greed right greed 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 extreme greed a few times and now in the past two weeks we're now back down to neutral right so take a look back down to neutral we have not been at neutral guys since we started that sell-off, keep an eye on this, right? Since we started the sell-off early last August, last fall, after being extended in greed for a better part of four or five months, this now is the exact same scenario. So market momentum still in, still in terms of greed, we're still well above our 125-day moving average. So it can come down exactly similar to what it did back here, right? Coming down touching the moving average. I'm not saying we're going to go all the way down there, but just to say we can still have some room to the downside to move. Stock price strength. Well, your market is still relatively uh, healthy. Net new 52-week highs and lows. We're still above 5%, which is still relatively good. But could we see this starting to curl down a little bit more? Very possibly as well. The, the little red flags, guys, have been there for the past two weeks. That's why I show this all uh, to you, right? In terms of stock price breadth, well, one thing that's good is that we are relatively wide in terms of stocks that are participating or have been participating in the rally, but that is now starting to curl over, right? Starting to curl over potentially as people get more and more defensive on which bets they want to choose. And now lastly, the put and call options. So we have been traditionally low on the put and call options. This just goes to show how many people are buying insurance for their portfolios. When this put and call options goes to the upside, just says that more people are buying puts, potentially to hedge, potentially to speculate that the market's due for a little bit of a downturn. And as you can see, that as well has been on the rise. So we're really coming far off, guys, the environment where it was basically a carefree environment. Inflation is done, right? The economy's healthy. Now we're getting a little bit more fearful because of the fact that inflation is stagnating and slightly trending up. So that is what's contributing, guys, to the sideways action that we've been having on these indexes for the past month. In terms of myself, I still remain cautiously and the key word is cautiously optimistic for these markets do i think that we're going into a potential recession later on in the year no do i think we're going to get rate cuts this year yes but at this point guys probably in the fall or later as long as the economy is healthy as long as the jobs market is healthy the fed sees no reason to decrease the rates right away so we'll just have to continue being data dependent on the channel. And what does that mean for us in terms of trading and in terms of uh, what kind of what kind of stocks that we're looking to enter, guys? Well, just remind you of these themes, right? These will not change as long as the inflation narrative is front and center. The best things to trade right now, AI names. Think semiconductors, big tech and profitable tech because they have so much cash 
no debt. They are not affected by interest rates. Other thing, experiences. You guys see, you guys can see that where are consumers choosing to spend their money? It is largely on experiences now. So think travel, casinos, and hotels. Those should stay relatively healthy for the remainder of the year. Healthcare and financials are other attractive sectors as well that although interest rates will remain higher for longer, the major banks are very well exposed and healthcare companies as well are flush with cash currently. No problems there. The ones that'll still be tough to trade are the rate sensitive plays, guys. So keep an eye out for these. Extremely tough to trade. I dare I say at this point, guys, almost uninvestable until we get through this higher for longer and sticky inflation narrative. Think of your EV plays, not just EVs, but all automakers truly. And even think of um, any company that offers financing for their products, whether that's cars, whether that's appliances, whatever it is, guys, equipment and machinery, right? Think of John Deere, stuff like that. Tough for them right now. Solar, obviously unprofitable tech, small cap tech, um, tech with a lot of debt on their balance sheet right now is just not going to be performing too well, in my opinion, guys. Consumer discretionary as well. People have less money. And we've seen warnings most recently from Ulta Beauty. We've seen it on the reports from Walmart. We've seen it on Starbucks. We've seen it from Nike. All of these companies saying consumers have less money and they're just not willing to spend as much as they once did two years ago. So those trades are still extremely tough trades, in my opinion. Borderline uninvestable if you're looking for short-term swing trades. If you're looking for long-term portfolio ads, definitely, by, by all means, guys, be my guest. Great time to be adding to names like Nike and Starbucks. They're not going anywhere, but they'll still be caught in this little bit of a rut as long as rates are high and as long as inflation remains sticky. And the last one is going to be China on somewhat of an unrelated topic, but just China, guys, since Chinese economy is going through a little bit of a rut right now, it's just not a very popular trade, a lot of uncertainty in that one. So if you really want to have the best chance at navigating this market this year, focus on these themes, guys. And even though, right, even though we could get a temporary sell off here for about a month or two months, if this narrative keeps up, well, these names stand to drop the least, right? Nothing. There's going to be very few things that are going to be protected if ever we have a broad market sell off because there's a fear narrative at play in relation to in inflation. The best thing you can do is get in the stocks that have the best chance to recover quickly thereafter once we're done the dip. So hopefully all of that was helpful for you guys. I apologize for spending so much time on it. But when we have such a big narrative shift, I do deem it to be important. So with all that out of the way, guys, let's get right into our indexes. And you'll see not much has changed. So we'll go over these quickly. Seems like I've been saying that pretty much for the past month, but it's true. Really not much has changed at this point, right? So SPY still in the context right now of a daily downtrend, right? We did not flush the lows of Thursday, which was what a, which was a key level that we were really keeping a close eye on as of yesterday's trade. Now, keep an eye guys on these lower levels, right? If we start really cracking below today's lower parts of the trade today, right? Right down here into your four, 512 area on SPY. Well, guys, we need to keep a close eye on your weekly higher lows, which is sitting at about 507. So yes, we are in the context of a daily downtrend. If the bears simply perpetuate that and we continue the loss of this trend line on the SPY right now, we need to keep an eye guys on this last line of defense, which is your horizontal support. It is your weekly higher lows for the SPY. If the SPY loses this, we may be ending up losing the uptrend and it gives the bears an opportunity to set a weekly downtrend exactly similar to what happened back here, right? So we're gonna keep a close, close, close eye on this next level of support coming up. So far, the bulls have done a great job of protecting that. And as I said, guys, right, um, if it wasn't, you know, if, it, if, if the jobs market and the economy wasn't healthy and people were crying recession once again, in my opinion, after a result like today, if there was still that recession fear on the table, after an inflation result like today, we would have probably ended significantly lower. So far, that's not the case. So we'll keep an eye on these lower levels, definitely. Moving on to QQQ at this point. Give me a quick second. So moving on to QQQ, roughly the same analysis at this point, right, guys? QQQ has obviously lost the trend line for a significant amount of time right now, roughly about the last two weeks. We're trading under our short-term moving averages, and QQQ is showing something that SPY is not showing. Keep an eye on this MACD down here. What does this measure? It measures your market momentum. When it crosses and becomes red, it means that the bulls are weak, potentially in consolidation mode. And they have been in consolidation mode for a better part of the last month right now. We just haven't had a significant weekly downtrend. Now, keep a very, very, very close eye, guys, on this level right here on the weekly. Sorry if I'm flipping between the charts here, guys. 
433.62, your most recent weekly higher low. If we flush that in the next coming week, you will be in a weekly downtrend on QQQ, something that has not happened since the sell-off of last fall. So it's notable to us. The bulls currently putting up some nice, nice, nice defense right now. They're protecting this horizontal range with their lives at this point. What we need the bulls to see, guys, is a break of yesterday's high. Get me back above yesterday's high without flushing these lows right here. And the daily uptrend is recaptured. And you do have a chance, guys, to really gain some of the levels on the weekly. But in my opinion, that's going to be tough, especially with the fact that earnings, tech earnings, is the one saving grace in my mind that can alleviate some of this short-term fear in the markets. And big tech earnings, guys, are not yet for another two, three weeks. So for the next two, three weeks, the only data that we'll have to digest is bad data that's come out recently, unfortunately, and that could lead our markets to be selling off until we maybe get some of those earnings results. So please, please, please keep a close eye on these levels. If we lose those levels, it'll be our first weekly downtrend. And I do believe at that point that the bears will probably get some continuation to the downside. Now, moving on to uh, financials, financials, daily downtrend, well, well, well in motion at this point, right? Flushing yesterday's low. We were on the watch for this for the daily downtrend. The bears have now set that. This is pretty much your first daily downtrend since the month, early month of January. So it's been about four months right now, clearly below the moving averages right now. Take a look at your weekly MACD. The weekly MACD is also not looking too hot. Momentum really waning off to the downside. So daily downtrend is established. We're quickly approaching the last line of defense for your bulls right now, which is going to be your 40.66, the top end of your all-time high range. Anything below that, we're going to target the 12 EMA, the 40.26, and any further retracement, just looking for a healthy weekly higher low. Right, so everything looking good on financials. Financials, I would just get a bit worried if we set the the higher low right here, lower high into lower low for the month of May. That would be, you know, that would be a decent red flag, guys, and we would be heading into a bit more extended monthly consolidation, potentially all of April, May, and maybe even into the early stages of June. That will be entirely reliant on what Jerome Powell says in that May meeting. As of now, we're not going to get too much ahead of ourselves. It's only a daily downtrend. So eventually we'll need to see when this move is finished up, how high is the bounce going to be? And can the bulls benefit from that bounce to reset the daily uptrend? As of now, your bears in full short-term control. Moving on to healthcare now. Healthcare just perpetuating the daily downtrend at this point. This is a scenario that we were talking about yesterday. So it has now manifested daily downtrend simply continuing. Any move higher at this point going to be looking for a lower high into further lower lows as our weekly consolidation on healthcare continues. Keep in mind healthcare, it is a weekly downtrend at this point and your MACD on the weekly is obviously crossing bearish as well. So momentum really lost by the bulls on both your daily and weekly timeframes at this point. We are now in monthly consolidation mode for healthcare. Good thing we're approaching a very big area of support. That's going to be 141 all the way down above the 137, your last line of defense for these bulls to maintain a healthy, healthy uptrend on these markets. Would not like to see them come much below the lower end of that 137 because then we may just get stuck in our prior two years worth of price action. So healthcare not looking too, too bad, but the bulls really need to hold up this green box. Now moving on to semiconductors. Semiconductors today down 0.87% as well. Really nothing being spared in today's market, right? Financials really having the worst time of them all because of that increase in yields. Semiconductors, right? They're still kind of maintaining this tightening range. You can see it best on the weekly. As of now, it is still a weekly bull flag, right? Very nice sideways consolidation after a nice move up. You would expect the bulls to be able to run with this if the overall macro was still bullish. Considering the fact, guys, We've been stuck pretty much uh, since your uncertainty happened in March. It's no secret why semiconductors also have not ran, guys. It really stemmed from uh, your inflation report that you got in the mid-month of March. That really gave us two hotter-than-expected inflation reports in a row. And even semiconductors started to chill out a little bit as investors were like, hmm, is inflation potentially going to ruin the AI rally and maybe pull back some of their bets, right? But as a whole, bulls still looking healthy. The one area where you would not want to lose is this 213.53 area. Why? Because it is your weekly higher low. If you lose that, you would end up in a weekly downtrend and monthly consolidation for semiconductors would be started at that point. It's been five months of gorgeous rally, similar to prior to last fall as well. It was about five, six months of gorgeous rally. And then we took a couple months off. Could we maybe set up for the same? That remains to be seen. And it all starts with this level right here, 213. A break that 
Weekly downtrend started, and it takes a while to reverse a weekly downtrend here, guys, right? The, the bears usually get follow through, and that could send us red for April and maybe even the beginning of the month of May. Now, moving into the IWM Russell. IWM Russell really downtrend in full swing right now, coming down into our prior area of uh, support, right? We also <laughs> just barely flushed the weekly higher low too, right? So we're in jeopardy right now if the week closes like this of losing the weekly uptrend. Weekly downtrend would be lower high into lower low. As of now, the bulls have their last line of defense, but they have to hold this level. If we were to lose it, guys, not that big of a deal. Why? Because on the monthly, I've been looking for this for a while, just looking for the monthly higher low. Keep an eye on your low, lower levels right here, 195. It is your confluence of your monthly moving averages and the lower end of this big previous resistance range, which is now going to be acting as support. So keep a very close eye on this level over the next coming weeks. That is going to be the last line of defense for the Bulls. Definitely not looking too strong. And it's normal, guys. IWM Russell is the most exposed to higher yields. And after the days, after today's yields absolutely skyrocketed, it is normal to see a big dip in the Russell. And now lastly, the Dow Jones. Dow Jones is, you know, 1% to the downside in a daily downtrend currently, right? So still in a daily downtrend on the Dow Jones. Dow Jones has not had this long of a daily downtrend, guys since the sell-off of last October. So it has to be notable to us, right? Losing the moving averages as well. Your MACD cross to the downside as well, looking negative, momentum kind of waning out. And now we have flushed the weekly higher low level. 38,500 has been flushed. If we end the week like this, guys, we will lose the weekly uptrend. A five-month worth of weekly uptrend has now been lost. It sets up the bears for a potential lower high into lower low. Weekly downtrend exactly similar to what we got here in the month of September or August and September. So it has to be notable to us, right? Below our short-term moving averages on the daily as well. That has not happened as much as it has uh, pretty much in this four or five month rally. So a lot of red flags for the Dow Jones. Now at this point, what are we looking for? If we lose this weekly and we set up for a weekly downtrend, well, you're looking out for the monthly at this point, guys. Monthly consolidation, most likely underway. Where are we targeting? Previous all-time highs. And that's all the way down to about 37,000 to about 36,500. So still a ways away for the Dow Jones to drop. But top to bottom, right? That will be a drop of about 7%. And that's exactly what we did last fall. 7, 8% drop on the Dow Jones before resuming our uptrend, right? So could be potentially setting up for something similar. We'll monitor this one day at a time, guys. And on all these indexes, you guys know what the bulls have to do. If you want to reverse these daily timeframes, give me a sizable enough bounce that engulfs the move or at least comes up close enough to the previous high that we get a chance at resetting these daily downtrends uh, into daily uptrends. So that's what we need to see across everything. Now, in terms of yields, we'll go over these very quickly. Nothing much has changed. So yields in currently a daily uptrend, right? We're going to focus more on the longer term timeframes. So yields are still in a weekly uptrend currently. What are we looking for? We're eventually looking for the monthly lower high into lower low, right? So that still is going to be a little bit of time before we get that because I mean, keep in mind, guys, let's say Jerome Powell comes out in the month of May and is extremely bearish. Let's say he adopts a very hawkish tone. And then in the month of May, we get harder than expected CPI inflation again. Well, these are going to come back up. I don't think we're going to crack the peaks of what we had last October, but it's notable to us. You can see every time inflation goes on this seasonal uptick like it has been doing last fall, we get a subsequent rise in interest rates. I don't believe we're going to crack the peaks of last fall because there was so much uncertainty back here. Now we have a lot less uncertainty about how strong the economy is, how strong the jobs market is, and which elements of inflation are persistently high, right? So we have a lot more clarity now on the whole inflation situation. I am expecting the eventual lower high into lower low, but that is still a little bit of time away. So this trade, looking for the short on yields, in my opinion, just not ready yet. Now, moving on to um, crypto hasn't really done much, so we'll skip over that. We'll do it tomorrow. Apple, Apple down again on the day, getting into our big tech names, right? So 1.11% to the downside. It's not Apple's fault, guys. It's really not their fault. It was CPI, right? So Apple, unfortunately, just perpetuating this daily downtrend right now. I'm still looking for a bounce from the bulls at this point, right? Need to see a bounce. If you want the bulls to be able to recover this, guys, we need to, at this point, to see a bounce come up as high as possible in relation to 172. Get me as high as possible to 172, and we can talk about the ability to reset the daily uptrend, right? But as of now, the bulls still unable to do the most basic of things, which is recapture your hourly trend. Once we get that hourly trend recapture, then we can talk about 
the daily bounce. But as of now, Apple has been incredibly weak for the better part of the last two, three weeks at this point. We're coming up on our last level of defense right here, down to 166 before losing this entire zone that we've kind of been stuck in now, guys. Previous all-time high zone, now it's acting as support. And really, we haven't, Apple hasn't done much. If you take these highs, right? Apple hasn't really done much in the last two years, guys. We're still in the same price range right now. If we dip below this level, we're coming hot into 155, 150. I still like Apple at this level right here for a swing trade opportunity. It is still providing a decent level, but if the overall markets fall off, guys, I'm telling you, Apple will visit the 155 to 150. If the markets shrug off today and the markets resume their course upwards, well, I do think that this level will hold. Essentially, what I'm saying is Apple's price action right now is beholden to the price action of the rest of the market. So I still like Apple at these levels, but I'll like it even more if it does come down here. Overall, still extremely bullish on the company. Moving on to AMD. AMD, not with the best of days today, 2.13% to the downside, right? AMD still struggling, almost trading within the range of last Thursday's candle lows, right? So AMD really hasn't done much, still trapped in this noteworthy daily downtrend, right? So at this point, they probably have set the lower high, trying to come into the lower lows, and we're coming into our last line of defense, guys. 164 to about 158. Last line of defense that we had back here January and February. Last area for your previous all-time highs as well. This is such a big zone. Because if we lose this zone, guys, you lose a five-month worth of weekly uptrend at this point. You would lose it, and it sets up the bears to set the lower high into lower low flush if ever the markets truly fall off a cliff. Keep in mind, AMD with earnings at the end of the month. So I don't believe we will get the full flush before earnings. Most likely we'll just get some sideways consolidation within the context of this previous range that we've been stuck in. And then earnings on the 29th is going to be the judgment day for AMD. Will we crack below this crucial level or will AMD report good enough earnings that we can resume our course to the upside in the breaking the 185 level? So that's kind of the price action I'm looking for for AMD. No red flags for the company just yet but similar to the rest of the stocks that we're going to mention guys if the rest of the market falls up if we get this every single day well you know what's going to happen to a lot of your favorite stocks they are not going to be immune unfortunately so amd still looking good still looking for this little swing trade first time bounce into this level for a little bit of profit but thereafter thereafter guys it is anybody's guess if the bulls are going to be able to defend this it's entirely beholden on the rest of the market now moving on to amazon give me another quick second all right, so Amazon holding up better than most guys, 0.15% to the upside. Amazon, really, if you were only look at Amazon, you really wouldn't be able to tell that the entire market was pretty much doing this today, right? Amazon up 0.15%, looking fairly good, still in the context of this daily uptrend. We got the higher low today, tagged the 12 EMA, so now higher low has been set. We'll be looking to the all-time high break, right? If we break 187.50, the all-time highs are literally right there for the taking, guys. 188, 189 is going to be the last line of defense for your bears right now. In terms of the weekly, the weekly is looking extremely, extremely gorgeous as well. Weekly uptrend, no end in sight right now, but as I've said for the rest, guys, Amazon cannot do it alone. If the rest of the market falls off, we could potentially be expecting Amazon to roll over. At that point, we'll be expecting the 178 to be our first line of defense after breaking up to it. And then we'll look to our last line of defense, the weekly higher low around 171. Still a lot of trading to be had before losing any form of weekly on Amazon and even any form of daily. Amazon, still one of your lead bulls in the market. As of now, no red flags for Amazon specifically. The red flags would just come as a byproduct of the overall market selling off. Now, moving on to Google. Google also with not that bad of a day, 0.3% to the downside. Google still well within its daily uptrend right now. So new highs are set. Any pullback, as we were saying yesterday, any pullback at all, just going to be looking for a higher low for potential continuation of the daily uptrend if the rest of the markets do cooperate. If not, and we get a little bit of rollover on Google, let's say we do set a daily downtrend. Is it that big of a deal? No. Why? Because Google is such in a beautiful weekly engulfing move right now. They've created so much space off the lows, guys, that even if Google were to sell off for the next three, four weeks in a row, we'd still only be looking for a higher low for further trend continuation. And this is where I start getting really attracted to Google, guys. 147, 146, 145. I'm keeping an eye on this level over the course of the next month. If we do sell off, that's where I'm looking to pick up Google for this potential recapture of this trend later on when the markets are maybe through a lot of this turmoil 
As of now, Google still looking extremely strong. Moving on to Meta. Meta, another one of your lead bold names, still looking extremely strong as well. In the context of this daily uptrend, gorgeous daily uptrend right now, playing good defense at the 12 EMAs right now. Meta really not at risk of losing much right now, still just looking for the higher low for further trend continuation. The red flags come if the, bear, if the bears take back too much of this move, come down into your previous area of support. These two yellow lines right here, come down into it, set the lower high, lower low flush, that would lose you a few that would lose a few weekly levels for you as of now that is not the case meta still just looking to perpetuate the continuation of this daily uptrend i will let you know if there's any red flags on meta as of now there are none beautiful weekly uptrend still concurrently going right now beautiful weekly upswing as well after breaking out of this tight range right here and meta just no red flags right still just on a gorgeous weekly uptrend so nothing wrong with meta currently their earnings coming up wednesday 24th of april i would love to see them maintain above this range of consolidation 490 to 480 would love to see them maintain above that prior to earnings because i do think that earnings are going to be a positive catalyst for the company and we could potentially see something like this and get just get a further leg up on meta thereafter if they do report substantially good earnings which i'll remind you they guided for last quarter that this quarter should be a banger as well now moving on to microsoft so microsoft down about 0.71 percent not their fault as well right just a byproduct of the rest of the market microsoft really choppy price action so really tough to determine what type of trend microsoft is in right now as a matter of fact it's not trending at all it is really just in a tightening range right now the good thing is that it's in a tightening range above our range of consolidation right above your 415 level that microsoft was stuck in for a better part of january and february now the weekly bulls are in full control look weekly breakout tightening range weekly breakout tightening range weekly breakout and now we have a bull flag above the higher end of support so we could be looking for something like this on microsoft in my opinion the this part of that analysis will most likely come only if the company reports substantially great earnings and that will come on the 23rd of april so what i'd like to see from microsoft until that time is maintain above your 415 level really perpetuate this bull flag above your area of consolidation let your 12 ema this moving average right here let it curl up into the price use this area of confluence to really set those weekly higher lows and then if we have great earnings guys that could be the catalyst for the leg higher on microsoft so all in all microsoft not looking too bad at all moving on to netflix now netflix 0.06 percent netflix actually had a gap down trade today and recovered beautifully the rest of the day so netflix currently in a little bit of daily consolidation now what we were looking for here guys the bulls had a great engulfing move we were in a daily uptrend just to remind all of you daily uptrend loss of the daily uptrend because we flushed these lows right here with these lows right here we were looking for the bulls to recapture they did a great job of putting an engulfing move but now they're losing a lot of territory guys the bears have taken back a lot of this move so far they've taken back almost 80 percent so could we be in a scenario where we set a lower high into lower low daily downtrend that will be the first daily downtrend on netflix pretty much since after their earnings right here in the month of late january if we do get a daily downtrend guys because the rest of the market sells off well you have your earnings coming up thursday the 18th of april so let's say we sell off hard here into earnings i will be looking for the bulls to protect this area right here your 575 the key area that we broke out of right this was 2020 2021 resistance need to see them them protect that right now it's a gorgeous weekly uptrend right no bad signals in sight so if we do pull back for a few weeks until their earnings i need to see them protect that 575 area and if they have a significant a significantly beautiful earnings call this may just be another one of these where we dip slightly before earnings and then get a rocket ship after earnings and that could potentially send us up back to the all-time highs guys but one thing's for sure if netflix has bad earnings we may just be able to revisit this lower 550 area and that's where i personally want to be swing trading netflix so all in all not looking too bad just keep a very very close eye on these lows right here 604.16 would be a significant loss of the daily trend daily downtrend could be likely at that point and then we'll be retesting the 575 now moving on to nvidia nvidia actually a bright spot in the markets today two percent to the upside protecting the 850 level that we were talking about so much yesterday right so nvidia currently in the context of this daily downtrend right now doing their best at trying to recapture this so they've completed step number one we've tried to recapture the hourly uptrend and seemingly we have got an hourly uptrend going now if they can continue this hourly uptrend into 
the top end of your most recent leg of selling, which is going to be this guy right here, right? This 890. If we can crack 890 to the upside, it gives the bulls the best chance at resetting for a daily uptrend. We're going to get back above our moving averages, healthily back above our 850 line of support, and maybe just save this further and a further further portion of a weekly sell-off, right? So NVIDIA not looking too bad at all. Great day, but it is only one day of trading, guys. If obviously we fall off tomorrow and um, Friday, well then obviously we're just going to continue in this weekly sell-off. And the level that I've pointed out on the charts that I'm looking to buy NVIDIA at is going to be the 750 range. Hugely important, um, hugely important level for this stock right now because it is pretty much the gap up level from your earnings. So I need to see the bulls protect this area as best as they can if they do pull down into it. As of now, still safe. First line, guys, eight, uh, 850 pretty much. If you lose 850, right, the daily downtrend, in my opinion, is going to just be too strong. We're going to use this as a lower high, use it as resistance and come lower. And at that point, guys, potentially start testing into these lower levels, 12 EMA, 808 and then our lower level is going to be 750 and once again i just reiterate guys if nvidia drops it's not going to be anything bad with nvidia i love the company it's just going to be because of this right in in this market nvidia will not be able to do what it did today forever right if we get a few bad days like this in a row nvidia is not just going to stay green the entire time so keep very close attention on nvidia for those reasons now moving on to tesla tesla 2.89 percent to the downside no secret there, guys, selling off with the rest of the market, but a bit more than most of your big tech because they're so exposed to higher interest rates, right? And today's inflation did not help that. So Tesla still trying for this daily uptrend attempt, right? Anything pretty much above 160.68, trying for the daily higher low for daily trend change at this point. But Tesla has its work cut out for them. They have earnings on the 23rd of April. In my opinion, guys, price action on Tesla probably going to be fairly muted until the earnings time. That being said, one step of positive news for the bulls would be if we crack this whole level right here, 183. Get me above 183 and you get me above this most recent area of weekly, weekly consolidation and you will get a significant weekly bounce underway and put some cushion between us and these lows prior to your earnings. That's what I would love to see because then if we get higher than 183, let's say we get up to about 186, 187, 188, it'll give us a lot of cushion, guys. That would give us really, you know, let's call it the high 180s, right? That would give us a cushion of about 14% between the price action at that point and our lows. And Tesla, although they may report somewhat of a bad earnings quarter this quarter, 14% should be. Now, keyword, should be enough to save these lows. But if ever, guys, we maintain too low towards these lower levels coming into earnings and earnings is bad, you may just get the ultimate earnings flush and that could really bring in us into our last line of defense here towards the 152. So I'm staying extremely cautious on Tesla. I'm not playing it at all until I see these earnings come out. So hopefully that helps you in preparation for those. Moving on to Palantir now. Palantir down 1.71% and Palantir still just stuck in this daily downtrend right now. We're going to be looking to protect these lows right here. 21.84, right? Palantir's just been stuck in kind of this daily downtrend and also weekly consolidation now for a better part of the last month and a half. No secret there. So if ever we do just continue this daily downtrend, flush these lows right here, is it that big of a deal? No. Why? Because we're coming up on a huge area of support, guys. Big, big, big support. 21.50 down to 19. Big support back here. Previous resistance, 52 week highs back here as well. So this whole range should be providing some great support. Even if we set a weekly downtrend into here, in my opinion, the bulls will be able to hold this lower $20 range uh, pretty well over the course of maybe an April and May sell-off. Why? We're just looking for the monthly higher lows. And this is part of the whole AI narrative trade. Nothing wrong with Palantir. They've been doing a great job expanding their business. So if we do pull back here for the monthly higher lows into 21, 2019, I'll be looking to accumulate some shares because I do believe, guys, that Palantir is a great opportunity to come back up and make an attempt at the $28 range at some point later on in the year. So Palantir, not looking too bad, even though the short-term bears are in control of this chart, we're coming up to the desired level of our swing trade entry. Now, lastly, PayPal. PayPal not looking too bad at all today, right? 1.67% to the downside, but they were down a lot more and recovered intraday. So now we are still trying to maintain this short-term daily uptrend. We had a beautiful daily uptrend right here, and we lost it by cutting these lows, setting the lower lows. So we were looking out. Can the bulls recover this into a new daily uptrend? Which they did. So now, looking good. Higher low is probably set with today's trading. But keep an eye, guys, if tomorrow and Friday are red, 
and we just flush this, right? And the bears regain short-term control. They will establish full control of the weekly time frame at this point, and we will probably be heading lower for a little bit more weekly consolidation. At that point, target this crucial area of confluence. 63 down to 61. Your weekly moving averages are right there. Huge prior area of horizontal support as well. That is where I think the bulls will be able to mount a greater defense if indeed the markets do continue selling off. Now, if the markets don't sell off and the markets just resume course as if nothing happened today, well, daily uptrend can be maintained by PayPal. Need to see a break of yesterday's high. And at that point, we'll be going for a weekly leg higher. And the weekly leg higher, guys, in my opinion, if you ask me my gut feeling right, I really don't believe that we are. I do believe that the markets are at least going to consolidate sideways much until our tech earnings cycle comes out. And then pretty much it's anybody's guess what's going to happen to the market uh, during the earnings cycle, right? If a couple of big tech names fall off, then the rest of the market is going to fall off as well. And it's not going to be pretty. PayPal is not going to be able to do it. So do I think that the $75 trade right coming up to these levels is likely within the next month and a half? You know, 80% no, 20% yes is how I'm standing on PayPal. So the breakout is beautiful, but if the rest of the market doesn't cooperate, PayPal's breakout will just have to be postponed a little bit longer. That being said, if we do come down and revisit this lower $60 range, I would be interested in building a somewhat of a small position here over the months of late April into May if the markets are down for a potential recovery there into you know, later part of the year, talking about most likely after July uh, and whatnot. That is when I truly think that PayPal can start really going on its exponential run higher. So hopefully that was insightful, guys, for all of today's markets. Hopefully I didn't sound too bearish, right? That was not the intent of the video. I'm just trying to portray the fact that there is a narrative at play right now, right? And we have to understand what is behind the narrative. The narrative, as I said, reminds me almost exactly of the narrative that happened back here in last fall. After four or five months of rally, everybody was extremely bullish. And then we got a few hotter than expected inflation reports because of seasonal factors. And then the fear started coming back in the markets. You started hearing about recession, uh, no rate cuts at all. You started hearing about runaway inflation again. And all that, guys, is going to come back because we don't have any major news catalysts until the end of the month when we get our big tech earnings and then Jerome Powell in the early month of May. And if Jerome Powell drops the hammer on us, well, most likely it's going to end up exactly like what happened in the month of last fall. It's not going to be a waterfall drop, but it could just be a very, very choppy market until we get through some of this narrative fear, right? If you don't believe the narrative, guys, it doesn't matter. You guys know me. We went through all these charts. Inflation is not here to stay, right? You guys can see it's not here to stay. It's going away. But that is not what's important. The importance is the market narrative. You guys know it as well as me, right? You can say that the market is rigged. You can say it's corrupt. You can say the media pushes the narrative. And I entirely, entirely agree with you, right? But our job is not to fight the market narrative. We have to understand the market narrative and call its bluff. So if we get a couple weeks, maybe even a month of two or sell off, and at peak fear, just as last October, right? At peak fear, when everybody is saying recession, 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 inflation's running away forever, and there's going to be no rate cuts for the next 5,000 years, well, that is when you have to buy the dips because we understand that that is not the case. The fear is at that point blown out of proportion, right? So it's our job to understand the narratives. Even if you don't agree with them, guys, that is what moves markets, unfortunately. So I still remain cautiously bullish and we will still remain patient buying dips in companies that we love. Be patient, wait for levels that you like on companies that you love and you will be highly rewarded, I promise you, by the end of the year, markets will most likely be significantly higher than the lowest point that we get to after a potential sell-off. Am I saying the sell-off is guaranteed right now? No, the markets could literally just discount everything that happened today and they can just say, well, the jobs are still healthy, economy is still healthy, no recession, so we're fine with higher for longer. No problem at all. Inflation is still, still somewhat transitory and we can just continue this bull run. In my mind, that is the unlikely scenario. The likely scenario is that we do get a little bit of sell-off after this five months of rally. But just understand, guys, that a lot of the 
a lot of the crazy fear that'll be behind the sell-off will be overdone, similar to how it was last, um, you know, back here. There's still a lot of companies doing amazing things for the spaces. And we went over all of the earnings last quarter, guys, and companies are generating, you know, very, very record high levels of revenue. They're generating very healthy EPS. Companies are leaner. Their margins are better. Their free cash flow are a lot better than they were last year or 2022. A lot of companies, guys, are very, very healthy. So in terms of that, there are no outstanding large, large, large red flags that just completely dislodges the bull narrative right now. Are there a few tiny little red flags here and there that the media and analysts can completely run with and drive fear into the market temporarily? Absolutely. And those are the ones that will be focused on. But just remember, who is in control of these markets, guys? The long-term bulls are in control of every single one of these indexes. And before they get dislodged, it will take some heavy, heavy, heavy fear-driven sell-off and all the people that entered the markets over the past year will have to exit. And I don't think that that will be the case because we are significantly better than the environment we were in 2022 and even early 2023. So there's no reason for the big money to be getting out just yet. Maybe just a little bit of profit-taking, a little bit of intermarket rotation, nothing more than that. So let's keep locked in. Let's stay focused on what matters most, guys, and just buy great companies at good prices. So take care, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider dropping a like. Would really appreciate it for the channel growth. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're new as well. We would love to have you here. And lastly, if you have any questions, as usual, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments, and I'll get back to you usually within the first 24 hours. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow after the close, and peace.